Ron Goodall from FightHype.com. I'm here with Eddie Hearn. How's it going? Doing good. I'm doing good. We've had a, an up and down week. Obviously, the early part of the week was just recovering from the loss and now moving into the positivity towards a big rematch and also getting this fight announced. Maurice Hooker against Jose Ramirez. Brilliant fight. Unification fight in the 140-pound division. And just keep cracking on. Keep working hard and keep trying to produce. Now, before I get into all the questions, I want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank but in you. addition, I saw you and Frank kind of do a little boxing match. Uh, yeah. You know, can it's you gone viral again. I mean, yeah. I'm lucky that it was it was uh, me that polaxed him rather than the other way around. Frank's like one of those guys where he's those really annoying. He's 26, right? I mean, I look old for 40, right? But he's 26. He looks like late 30s anyway. And he's that really annoying guy that puts the gloves on. He's like, come on. Come on, let's have a little move around. Oh, so it's he like, started. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I'm like, Frank, please. The next thing he's trying to headbutt me is. So we just had to send him to the, the floor, you know, with a little body shot. So most people can catch that on social media. So, uh, yeah, he's he just he's a young young boy. He needs to be put in his box every now and again, you know, and rem remember that he's just 26. Is there a rematch clause in that? No, yeah, 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 quite possibly. I don't want it. I don't want that smoke anymore. <laughs> now, talking about rematch clauses, mm. I just want to get to the point where I spoke with you and Canelo Jacobs mm -hmm. week, and it, this 50 million dollar stuff that everyone's talking about and all these things, it's like you guys, it's already predetermined, mm -hmm. right? You guys gave an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to clear up the air. That yeah, I mean, look, I'm not going to talk too much about. The contractual situation but you pretty much hit the nail on the head um, and you know I don't know where the fight's going to be um, for me the fight should be in the UK Joshua is got this crazy idea at the moment that he should put it right in the ring where he lost and I'm like look you came to America to Andy Reese's country and fought him there it doesn't make you a bad person going to the UK for the rematch so we'll see it's definitely not a done deal to do the fight in the UK, um, but we're just talking to all the venues at the moment, the dates, obviously DAZN would prefer to fight in the US, um, Sky Sports would prefer to fight in the UK, probably the British fans would prefer to fight in the UK, but still quite a few things to discuss next week. Now, um, I've always been like an analytical individual and just kind of curious on the success that has done compared to other Sky mm. Box Office. Um, but, you know, Joshua breaking mm -hmm. the record with Vladimir had a great one with Joseph Parker. Mm -hmm. How old did Ruiz and... Good. Uh, I mean, not as good as your standard 10 p.m. I don't forget the fight was at, what, 3.30 in the morning, something like that. Coming out about half of uh, a normal fight, which is, say, the Povetkin fight. Okay. So, you know, about half those numbers. Um, which we were quite pleased with, you know. There, there was all kinds of stories about piracy, and and the piracy numbers are based on how many people viewed the fight illegally, mm -hmm. not live. So obviously, when people wake up and there's clips going around that shouldn't be posted, and mm -hmm. that's all taken into consideration. So of course, that number is going to be huge, and that is a problem you face now with a pay-per-view model, in that people have got access to the content so quickly, not live necessarily. They can try and find it, although broadcasters are clamping down on that very well. But post-fight, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you can find it somewhere. So that's always a challenge, and that's one of the refreshing things about DAZN, is you don't really have to worry as much about how many pay-per-view buys you do because they take the risk away being a subscription business. Now, with the DAZN um, results in the U.S. market, I, I read something that said that it, it did really well, but it was just shy of the Canelo. Mm -hmm. How far away... What's the Josh when Ruiz compared to the Canelo fight? So um, it was not, yeah, yeah, it was, I mean, it was the third best broadcast so far behind the two Canelo fights. Obviously, for the first Canelo fight, you had all the free trials. Okay. So it was a bit sort of skewed. It drove good subscriptions, but more importantly was the awareness that it created post-fight. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at their YouTube numbers and just the noise from that fight, the brand awareness from DAZN was incredible. And once we sort of got through the pain of defeat, we all realise that even from a matching point of view, you know, our job is to put on great shows and entertainment. And we did that in droves last Saturday, but we lost. And DAZN lost because they lost one of their fighters as well, effectively, in terms of the belt. So, you know, once they got over that, they sort of thought, hang on, though, like everybody is watching this. And when you look at the value that DAZN are delivering, you know, in May you had Canelo against Jacobs, June the 1st, Joshua Rees, June the 8th tonight. You've got the Golovkin fight, Andrade Sulecki at the end of the month. Now you've got the big unification fight in July between Hooker and 
and uh, Ramirez. Then you've got probably Canelo, Triple G, three. Then you've got Joshua Ruiz rematch. Like, if you're a fight fan and you're not spending $99 a year to buy DAZN, you really are crazy. But it's about driving awareness for what DAZN is and where you find it. And there has been no marketing campaign that DAZN have put together yet anywhere near as effective as last Saturday. So for them, it was a huge night. And now we gear up for what was probably the biggest fight of the year in the rematch. Now, with that rematch and all the exposure the fight's gotten, do you think that the potential for the Skybox office could break the Vladimir Klitschko record? Yeah, again, I mean, if it was in the UK, this fight would break all box office records. If it's in the US at 4 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning, you're going to struggle to hit those kind of numbers. But it is, like, this is everywhere. I mean, in the UK, this is front, back page, everywhere. Even in the US, I mean, this is the first time I've walked around in the US and people on the streets are talking about boxing. My God, did you see that? And people go, man, what happened to your boy, Joshua, man? You know, but everybody's talking about it and that's what you need to grow the sport. So you need to engage the casuals and you know this rematch is gonna be such, so mainstream in the US in terms of the media that it's gonna be absolutely huge and it's brilliant for boxing. Great that an underdog has come and dethroned the golden boy, if you like, of, of, of the sport. We don't want it, but it's still good for the sport because if you just keep winning, 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 it becomes boring. And I actually said that to AJ. You know, you don't just win, 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 retire. You know, mountain tops and valleys is the same. And right now he's in the valley and he's going to be working towards regaining his belts and, and reaching the top of the mountain. Now, outside of the UK and US, has there been another country that wanted to try to get the Lots, rematch? actually, yeah. What, yeah. what were some of the other... I mean, in the, in the uh, Middle East, so, okay. you know, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Qatar, Abu Dhabi. You know, we've had some approaches from Nigeria. Oh, wow, um, really? Yeah. So maybe yeah. some rumble in the jungle? Kind yeah, of thing? I still think the favourites are UK or uh, the US. But it's a, it, this, this has gone everywhere, worldwide. So... It's not just the, you know, the one thing about Joshua is his appeal globally. And now Andy Ruiz has that. I mean, Andy Ruiz just has to beat Joshua again. He's like one of the biggest stars in the sport. He probably is now. So there's a lot on the line on this rematch.